you. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, thank you to our previous two speakers. So I think with their with their topics, with their presentations, we get a glimpse uh, into the world of digital banking and actually how impactful digital solutions are, especially digital financial services are, uh, to uh, society generally uh, in terms of closing, uh, in, in terms of serving the uh, under underbanked or the unbanked. So uh, just before we head on to Q&A, my brief presentation will be on the existing regulatory framework that we have that's relevant to digital banks and what the future looks like in terms of regulation. All right. So there's been a lot of excitement on digital banking and digital financial services generally. And just to clarify, uh, in terms of regulations, there's really no specific rule or specific licensing for digital banking. So, so right now, that's where we are. Oh, if a bank wants to become a digital bank or if an entity wants to come in and uh, be a digital bank, they actually have to come in and procure regular banking licenses. So that's either uh, you get the license to be a commercial bank, a trust bank, universal bank, uh, investment bank, or a rural bank. Uh, but of course, if, you, uh, if the BSP supervised entity, whether it be a bank, uh, an EMI or any other financial entity supervised by the Banco Central, when they want to provide digital services, uh, most likely they would fall under other regulatory uh, regimes. So for example, if an entity wants to provide electronic payment uh, and financial services, then that entity would have to procure an EPFS license. So that's either a basic EPFS license or an advanced EPFS license. So what falls under this one? So for example, if you if a bank wants to provide services through a mobile phone or through any other computer device, then they would have to get an EPFS. So that includes uh, the transfer of funds, uh, but it's not limited to that. It also includes the capacity to provide services. So for example, loan applications uh, and other banking services. So in the, in the comment section, in the Q&A uh, panel, I actually saw one question like, uh, will the regulator allow, or does the regulator allow banks and FIs to do, for example, electronic KYC or remote KYC? So stuff like that, that's already, uh, that's already uh, considered or legal under current regulation. So the, in terms of eKYC actually, the BSP allows financial institutions a lot of leeway when it comes to doing their, K, their KYC processes. So for, for as long as uh, a financial institution has its own risk-based uh, KYC system, uh, they can actually implement remote KYC uh, for so long as they declare what type of technology they use and what the process is. So the BSP has been very uh, flexible or has been very enabling uh, when it comes to digital solutions. So right now, uh, reform, regulatory reform is actually happening on two fronts. So one from the BSP and there's another, uh, there's another uh, thing going on with, uh, in, in Congress right now, there's a draft bill. So for the BSP, uh, the central bank has issued its own draft regulations. Uh, in the past few, in the past few weeks, uh, on digital banks. So under the draft regulation, uh, the BSP seeks to amend the existing manual for uh, banks in order to include digital bank as a separate classification, in addition to the six existing classifications. So as you can see in the screen, uh, digital bank would be included as one separate class. And in terms of uh, the definition, so for the BSP, they consider a digital bank as a bank that largely offers financial products and services through digital platforms or electronic channels. So for this particular purpose, a digital bank will not be allowed to establish a branch or a branch light except for uh, its office, except for office operations. And then under the draft guidelines also, uh, there will be two 
classifications for digital banks. So it's basic or advanced. And the difference lies uh, in this, I mean, the main differences uh, lies in the clients that they can serve, the services that they can offer, and of course, the capitalization. So the digital banks would, it looks like, based on, based on the draft, it looks like uh, the basic digital bank would uh, be mainly for retail customers and MSMEs, uh, while advanced digital banks would cater to bigger clients and uh, presumably take on bigger, bigger risk. Uh, for services, the services for basic digital banks would be limited to these ones enumerated here, so deposit taking, foreign currency deposits, granting of unsecured loans, remittance, uh, collection, and payment for the account of others. And the advanced digital bank would be able to do more things. So grant secured loans, issue credit cards, and uh, possibly other activities which may be approved by the monetary board. So based on, based on the draft, uh, it looks like digital banks would be taking or would be able to offer less services than your traditional commercial banks. Like, for example, digital banks won't be able to engage, in, to invest in non-allied uh, activities. Uh, they won't be able to provide credit facilities, aside from the granting of straight loans. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, I, at least as of now, the risk that the BSP would want digital banks to uh, expose themselves would be, would, be, would be less than your existing traditional banks. And that's also probably why the capitalization is uh, just at 400 million, and then for advanced digital banks, it's at 900 million. Uh, so for foreign participations, it's quite similar to the existing limitations now imposed on banks. So foreigners may enter the market if they're not banks, they're limited to 40%. If, uh, if they are qualified foreign banks, then they can own 100% of the digital bank. So just for uh, everyone's information, uh, here are some salient points from the efforts going on in the lower house. So this is being pushed now by uh, Congressman Joey Salceda. There's a house bill for virtual banks. So they call it virtual banks as opposed to digital banks. Uh, where the, so Congress wants to amend through law with the General Banking Act in order to include virtual bank as a separate classification and also create its own licensing regime. So for defini the definitions are quite similar with the definition given, in, given by the central bank. However, the version in the house for virtual banks would actually allow virtual banks to engage in more activities as opposed to uh, that proposed by the central bank for digital banks. So it includes the, the bill includes the grant of uh, the ability to invest in bonds, debt securities, commercial papers, as well as the authority to issue letters of credit and offer other credit facilities. Uh, under the current bill, Congress seeks to limit the grant of licenses to, to just five a year. So this is similar to how uh, the licensing regime started for foreign banks. I think there was a time that there was uh, an annual cap or there's just uh, a cap at any given time uh, where only 10 foreign banks can come in. So anyway, that's where we are. Uh, that's the regulatory regime that we have at the moment. Uh, and I think the fact that the central bank has been active in issuing a draft guideline and same thing with the, uh, with the lower house, it just shows, uh, or it's aligned with the ongoing trust of the Banco Central to promote innovation, promote uh, digitalization of the financial industry while at the same time ensuring that the consumers are protected and the risk exposure is somewhat controlled. So there. Thank you.